This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by The Marketing Masters. The Marketing Masters is a boutique marketing agency offering website development and digital marketing services to small and medium businesses across America. For more information on how they can help you grow your business online, please visit themarketingmasters.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. I'm so excited and honored to have my friend on with us today, Michael Weiss. He's the co-founder of AI4. Welcome to the Impact Podcast, Michael. John, thanks so much for having me. Awesome to be here. Always love talking with you. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know I'm in Fresno today and we were talking a little bit off air. We're, we're just starting to come out of this COVID-19 um, tragic period in, in the world history. And I know you're in beautiful Cape Cod, which I've been blessed and blessed before to go in my life. So we're having a coast to coast conversation today. But uh, but it's just great to have you uh, uh, on with us and uh, and be able to share your journey. Michael, before we get talking about your great organization, uh, AI4, and for our listeners that like to learn more about Michael's great organization and what he does and what they do, you can go to www.ai4, the number four, dot .io, dot .io. Um, share a little bit about before you founded AI4, what you did and what your journey looked like uh, and your background. Yeah, for sure. So my extremely short bio I grew up in South Florida and Fort Lauderdale, went to school in St. Louis at Wash U, graduated in 2012, worked for two and a half years at this like media and events business called BizNow. And then I left there in 2015 and I started my own venture, you could call it, which was to bring a World's Fair back to the U.S. And, you know, pretty much our, our goal was to organize the world's first privatized World's Fair in the U.S., um, the reason why the goal was to do a private World's Fair as opposed to a government-funded World's Fair was because the uh, the U.S. government actually like had canceled the U.S.'s participation in the treaty organization that oversees World's Fairs, um, known in the present day as World Expos. And so there wasn't really room to have one be funded by government. And so anyway, long story short, we started this project to you know, privatize the world from the U.S. And what we did for just about three years was we organized these like mini world's fairs called World's Fair Nano, hmm. which were pretty much these like big technology kind of future festivals. And we convened, you know, 20,000 people through those events. Um, and they were awesome. You know, people got to experience VR for the first time or robotics for the first time hmm. or try lab grown whatever for the first time <laughs> um so it was a really cool really cool experience for people what did you learn like take give, give our listeners like everyone should learn something from their experiences in life and the more we learn and the more we experience the richer our life becomes and the more perspective we have and we take it to our next venture what were your major takeaways that you've been able to apply to your next venture uh and 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 can you just share with our listeners what you took away from the the nano uh, world's fair uh opportunity yeah yeah definitely a bunch of stuff i mean one sort of technology takeaway i had from just witnessing all these people and companies that were you know working in different like innovation categories whether it was you know, transportation, space tech, robotics, whatever, was that AI and just the idea really of being able to automatically take, you know, novel insights from data, um, which is, you know, really what AI is right now, mm. that that was just becoming ubiquitous and powering, you know, innovation across every industry. And then on like a more personal level, something I learned from it was, you know, I was 24 at the time when I set out to organize this world's fair and I was, you know, <laughs> my, my plan to actually get it done in retrospect sucked. And uh, it was a very ambitious goal. And, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't achieve it, but we did a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, even though world's fair nano as like a business and as, you know, a goal to bring this big world's fair back failed ultimately, it did some good stuff, but 
I wouldn't have done it in any other way. Um, right. And so I think what I learned was, you know, I, I came up with this big audacious goal because it just intrigued me and I went for it and I failed, but whatever. And now as I go into, you know, as I started the next thing and I think about the future, I try to get just as excited about having big audacious goals that right. interest me and hopefully I'll, you know, have learned along the way to figure the next one out. <laughs> for, for, yeah, well, let me tell you something. You figured it out, Michael. So to your credit, you know, I met you still, you're extraordinarily young and I've been so uh, honored and privileged because of you and your partners to be invited to your AI4 conferences, which I came to in New York in the last year or so. And uh, I spoke at a couple of them. We exhibited at some. And so I could just tell our listeners out there, you put on one heck of a conference. And I go to these conferences all around the United States and actually around the world. And yours are one of the most not only relevant and timely conferences, but I mean, well attended with the leaders in all different sectors, whether it's retail or uh, um, uh or at, at all the different, or cyber, or all the different things that you're touching is just incredible. For our listeners out there, we've got Michael Weiss. He's the co-founder of AI4. To find him, you could go to www.ai4, the number four, dot io, AI4, which is the gold standard community to growing AI industry that connects Fortune 500 companies, AI startups, investors, and government AI leaders, and top app academics. Talk a little bit about how you then transitioned from your first vision of the World's Fair, bringing back the World's Fair, and then putting on some of the nano events, to then dreaming up this conference that has been just a runaway success. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. Um, so... Yeah, coming out of Worlds for Nano, you know, we still like technology and we kind of fell in love with AI. It was clear that, you know, smart computers and machines that can literally think for us were going to represent a massive part of the future. So we decided to focus on AI. And then, you know, through Worlds for Nano, which was a consumer facing kind of event, we decided that it would be a much better business model if we focused on industry and business people. Um, and yeah. And so we decided to do AI for business was, you know, really the, the initial concept. And then, you know, we entered sort of the, the market with a very niche approach. And so we did one event that was all focused on AI for financial services, another event that was focused all on AI for healthcare, and then AI for retail, AI for cybersecurity. And, you know, over the past two, two years, we've been doing those and they've been going great. They're, you know, application only events to attend. And so, you know, as you kind of mentioned, we we get a really legit crowd there. Um, and, yeah, I think we've helped a lot of, you know, really big Fortune 500 type companies just make more sense of how to approach how to approach their own AI projects. Did you do this with your partners from the World's Fair not Nano or did you come up with a new group of partners that you co-founded this great conference? It was same, same crew, same, crew. same crew. Isn't that nice? You guys stayed <laughs> together and that's awesome. I love that. I mean, I, you know, I've done that before in my, in, 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 uh, in my life from business to business. And I've had a lot of success doing it with the same crew because then we were able to focus on the vision forward instead of worrying about, is this the right partner? Is that partner doing the right thing? You already had a, a relationship with them and a trust in them. So obviously it makes the execution in my experience easier. Did you find the same with you? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, my my main co-founder, Marcus, he's I've known him since college for a dozen or so years. So awesome. Um, you know, very, very solid relationship, which is yeah, key, key to success, key to success. Awesome. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the first the the conferences you put on in New York City and 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 why you subdivide and fascinating by topic and, 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 and by topics and how did that work out? Cause I went to them, but I want you to share from your vision, why you chose certain topics and how those conferences evolved and worked out in New York, uh, uh, in the last couple of years. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, to be honest, we chose with, we, we chose these niches of like AI in particular industries, mm. just, just to provide focus to the theme. Um, there, there were a couple other events we'd seen that were more generally themed, like AI for everything, and we wanted to be different. And so, you know, we came out with this niche of AI for these particular industries, and we chose the industries based on our assessment of 
you know, the current like value of AI within them. And, you know, financial services, banks, hedge funds, credit card companies, insurance companies, they're all going crazy with, you know, machine learning models to give loans or, uh, you know, fight, fight fraud or build chatbots or whatever it is. Um, and so we chose that. And then healthcare also just uh, amazing adoption rates within healthcare, whether it's hospitals for, you know, models to predict patient readmittance or read medical scans or whatever, or pharma companies trying to predict, you know, new drugs or whatever. Um, so we chose healthcare and then yes, yeah, cybersecurity and retail, same reasoning. There's just really compelling use cases in those domains. Um, and then, you know, as we've kind of gone over the past couple of years, what we realized was that while we were doing these, you know, like 400 or so person events in each of these industries, we realized that there was just uh, not enough consistency to like this AI industry community in terms of no one knows the rule book yet for how to actually approach AI within like an enterprise setting. And people are just confused, whether they're a business person, whether they're a data scientist. Confusion abounds right now when it comes to AI within these enterprises, um, which is okay because it's just new. People are just still figuring it out. Right. Um, but you know, while it's new, there are leaders in in the space. There are certain companies, certain people mm. who are just farther along in their own AI journey. Mm. And you know, we felt that it, it's critical for the longevity of AI. As as you know, an industry, to to really provide the 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 same group of people who who care about AI with a place to meet, um, and so what we ended up doing in 2020, which obviously is a bit different now because of the virus, was we decided to combine our four events into one larger AI four show. Um, you know, so we cover finance, healthcare, retail, cybersecurity, and then we also added telecom, energy, and automotive. Mm. Um, all with separate tracks so that you have like your own unique content, but then you get to kind of cross pollinate with people who, who have lessons from other industries. Um, Got it. yeah. And then, so now we're coming out of this COVID-19 tragic period in the world history. Um, originally I know your event was scheduled to be in Las Vegas, uh, at the end of the summer in the you know, late August, early September, share with our listeners how you've re-envisioned this year's conference because of the COVID crisis and how as an entrepreneur, you've remained flexible and evolved your uh, uh, thinking as to how to best put it on this year and, and some thoughts about your conferences in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, so, you know, we, there's a couple of thoughts we had. So yeah. A, obviously, as, a, as an events business that makes 95% of your money mm. doing a big physical event, right. and then you have a pandemic hit, when mm -hmm. like the key thing that cannot happen is a large gathering, it's almost laughable as far as like the, you know, right. macroeconomic, macro, macro, you know, climate like impact it has. Right. Um, but anyway, so that happened, which was, which was curious to say the mm. least. And right. then it was like, okay, so what do we do? So right. what we kind of realized is that the value that an event like ours provides, it's mostly two things. It's mm. education and it's commerce. It's education, in our case, in the form of learning how AI is impacting different industries. And it's commerce in the form of facilitating, you know, like uh, AI companies meeting end users, buyers at banks or healthcare companies or right. retailers or whatever. And that's, that's why people go to events. That's why people buy booze. That's why people list sit in the audience. That's why people speak. It, it's education and commerce. And so we kind of, in this you know, era of COVID over the past few months, have been like, well, can we, still, can we still provide that value prop to people without a big physical event? And the answer is, of course, yes, because the internet is a beautiful thing. And so you know, the, the most like one-to-one -one thing we're doing to the event is we're just porting like the physical experience into a digital platform. Um, and it's going to be great. It's eight, August 18th through 20th. Uh, so it's three days and we're going to have, you know, all the same tracks, a bunch of speakers. You can like schedule meetings with people and take video meetings through and uh, like filter through, you know, a really cool networking function. We're going to, we're building like a whole sort of exhibitor booth section on our website where you'll be able to filter by type of mm. companies you want to meet. And you'll be able to request meetings and all this stuff. 
So, you know, we're going to have a great sort of just digital event. And instead of honestly, we were expecting like two, three thousand people or something in Vegas. We'll mm. probably have because it's digital, you know, easy, no travel costs, right. easier for a global audience. We expect to have five thousand or more, you know, tune in, which is wow. going to be cool. And I bet you your participation now will even be more international in its uh in its uh, uh, and, and diverse than ever before, given that, like you said, people can be coming in from all parts of the world, whether it's Asia or Europe or Russia or anywhere, South America, easily, because there's no travel, uh, airplanes or hotels needed, and people can just uh, either participate, speak, or be an attendee uh, uh, from all different parts of the planet now. That's fascinating. Yeah, totally. Totally. So I think there's lots of cool opportunities on that front to just yeah have a much bigger audience. And for and for our listeners who are excited to either attend or request a sponsorship opportunity, uh, do they find you just at uh, uh, www.ai4 the number four dot io, or are there other ways to interrelate with you that I'm missing? Yeah, the website's great, and you can you know, always email me personally, just Michael at AI4.io is always, always fair game. Perfect. Michael at AI4.io. Um, so you have this coming up on August 18th to 20th, the big conference. And, um, and, and that's going to be fascinating. So you go from two to 3000 people participants now to five and people can be sponsors, speakers, or just attendees. Yeah, sponsors. Exactly. It's really all the same kind of, you know, characters will be there. We'll have amazing speakers, <laughs> sponsors, attendees. There'll still be press that attends. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's really it's really the same same vibe. The, the main thing, honestly, you miss out on is like the entertainment component. Yeah. Um, but that said, we are going to do some fun stuff regardless. We're going to do each like evening, like sort of a, a big virtual, you know, video like networking thing. We'll have like some drinks, we'll have some music. And I think we'll even, we've been thinking, I'll give you a fun tip. Do you know, have you heard of this thing called Cameo? Yeah. So I think we're probably going to, we'll, we'll do like a Cameo or two to get like some fun celebs to tune in um, for, uh, for these networking things to make it fun for people. Awesome. That sounds just awesome. I think Cameo is wonderful. In fact, my son, had just when he graduated from law school, like I shared with you, we were both uh, – comedy is a common theme in our family. So I had the uh, – the, we lo- we all grew up loving Seinfeld. He grew up loving Seinfeld, and we all used to watch it as a family. So I actually had the actual soup Nazi from soup Seinfeld. Nazi, yeah, he's on there. <laughs> yeah, and, and he taped the most wonderful message for my son uh, because it was a just like your event we had for him uh, uh, it was it was in a was not a in person graduation which is a very special moment in both parents life and of course the students life but it was a virtual graduation so it made the, the virtual graduation even more fun because he referenced it and he talked about it and uh, and and it was just it was just great so i think cameo is just a great brand and uh, they're doing really fun things and i know a lot of people that uh, that have used their talent and their in their platform and the results are just wonderful. So I think that's a brilliant idea. That's just brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah, you it sounds like you beat me to it. So that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk about other things you're doing in in, a, in this post soon to be post COVID uh, new order for this year, at least for this year um, to keep your brand and your and your um, your tribe, as I would like to call it, uh, engaged and uh, and relevant with your platform. What other things are you going to be doing besides your big event on August 18th, 19th, and 20th? Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, through this whole COVID thing, you know, we had to reflect a bit on what AI4 is and the value it provides. And as I mentioned earlier, the two main things we do with the event is commerce and education. And so while we're going to still provide those things in this, like, big digital event, We've also come to learn and realize that we can we can provide you know both education and commerce in other ways as well. So like on the education front, we've started doing these trainings and tutorials, which are like you know five up to sixteen hour trainings for either like business execs to learn AI or data scientists to pick up new skills. Um, and they've been going great. We actually we had our first one happen over the past two days. 
Um, we had 17 students tune in, mm. two and a half hours each day. It was like the business exec one. And yeah, we partnered with this amazing person who's been teaching such stuff for years. And it, it was awesome. Um, so now, yeah, we're building, you know, a little training, AI training part to our business. And then and then on the on the commerce side, yeah, we've realized, you know, one of the key values that people get at any event, our event included, is just getting to meet people who might want to buy your stuff. <laughs> right. Um, and then on the other side, getting to meet vendors who might have solutions that you haven't thought of before that could help your company solve some problems. Right. And and so we've realized that, you know, that commerce component we could kind of take from out of the event and just do it on its own. And so we've started now uh, essentially matchmaking digitally like AI companies with end users um, through right now a very simple, you know, fairly manual system. But we're slowly building more of like a platform around it. Um, and so that, that's been really interesting, too, just to see that that kind of growth. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're, we'll we're going to do the digital event this year, next year, hopefully a physical event, if not a digital event. And I right. think, you know, events will remain part of our, our ethos. Um, but I think we're also going to expand the ways that we're able to provide AI education and commerce as well, which is cool. Which is really cool because here I'm, I'm an old school guy. You're a very young man and I'm now 57 years old. And during this, um, a COVID-19 period, I took two online courses and I not only thoroughly enjoyed them, I felt so engaged by them. Uh, I got so much out of them, much more than I ever thought. And, um, and, and they, again, it, it forced me to improve and learn and, and expanded my horizons and also uh, personally and professionally. I think that's a tremendous, um, use of the online platforms now that you'll be able to leverage because not only will you be able to next year have in-person events, which or at least one huge event, and I've been to your events before and they're not only packed, but they're packed with the best of the best of each industry. Um, you'll also be able to ha have such an international flair to uh, the people that who want to be engaged with your organization get to interact with, because if you do digital events as well, uh, it keeps people year round attached to your brand, but also constantly learning whatever's the latest and greatest. And as we know, AI is, a, is, 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 is really a very quick evolving industry. So you get to really, uh, um, keep up and keep your people very engaged with the latest updates instead of just having a one-off every year, which is fine. You get to really um, actually have a much larger organization probably uh, and, and, uh, and uh, following than ever before. So you, you take a, a crisis and you make it a huge opportunity. I think you're, I think you're going to grow faster than you ever expected. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. I, I'm weirdly hopeful. I wish I wouldn't have thought maybe four months ago when I realized, you know, our entire business was I impractical for the next 12 months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, but, but again, like you said, we're all forced to, to think differently um, from the circumstances that none of us, you know, created, but, you know, entrepreneurs, the great entrepreneurs stay flexible and they roll with it and they take um, issues and, and crises and they really, uh, figure out ways to evolve. And you've done that. And I, and I, I really, really uh, am impressed. And I'm very excited, of course, to participate again, August 18th to the 20th. And, uh, and, and again, for our listeners out there that want to be part, part participate, want to get engaged, want to learn more about Michael's great event and, and also other uh, programs that he's putting on with his organization, AI4. You could go to www.ai4, the number four, dot IO. Michael, any final thoughts before we say goodbye for today until our next uh, visit together? Um, final thoughts, I guess. Who Who is like the main type of person, John, who listens to this, would you say? Oh, these, it's, it's actually interesting. It's all, it's people from all different, it's around the world and a lot of young people, your age and, and even younger. So you have a lot of young listeners out there that actually want to be the next Michael Weiss. Yeah. So if it's young people, you know, I, I'm, which I still consider myself mostly one of, but, oh yeah, you are, um, you know, yeah, just 
just go for it. Don't, uh, I think it's really easy to, especially with social media and online to be like, Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. Like that person is this credential. Nah, fuck it. Like if something's interesting to you, just do the damn thing and you know, you'll figure it out as you go. And if you don't figure it out, it doesn't matter because you'll have learned a lot. So you'll figure the next thing out. Um, that's, that's so just, just great advice. Just go <laughs> for it is, is really you know, yeah, the main, the main thing I would, I would share. It's great because you know, it's it's funny. I, I was interviewing a, uh, someone on a podcast just the other day, and he said, people talk less about fear than sex. They, they talk about their, their fear, their own fear, less about their own sex life because they're so embarrassed about fear. And overcoming their fear to start something, is, your advice is great. Just do it. Don't worry about failing. You know, there's no such thing as failure. If you've learned something from it, look at you. you. You learned from your first experience and it's not a failure. You learned and now you've made a massive success out of your um, this next venture. And you're still amazingly young. I mean, like super young. So, uh, you know, I've been to your events. And as I said, I'm very discerning about the events that I attend because I'm invited to a lot to speak and also participate or sponsor or whatever or, or just exhibit. And your events are, are second to none. And you've really figured out a way to, to make them feel uh, both uh, special, but also very, very expansive in terms of the people and the visibility and the diversity that you have at your events. I mean, massive success. And now taking it online and having the whole world uh, be able to participate. I can only imagine what's going to happen at this uh, upcoming event. I think it's going to be a huge success, Michael. Thanks so much, John. For the record, I turned 30 this year. So, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> like I said to my listeners and to you as well, super young. 30 is super young. I have a, a son that's 28 and a daughter that's 33. So to me, you're super young. Um, for our listeners out there to find Michael and his partners and his great organization and to learn more about his great event coming up August 18th to the 20th, go to www.ai4.io. Michael, you're making a great impact. You're making the world a better place. And I thank you for coming on the show today. And you're always welcome back. Thanks so much, John. You are absolutely the best. And I hope you have a healthy and safe 2020. And I'll see you digitally in August. <laughs>